The delays were due to Mark Schultz continuing to refine his writing and art, becoming more of a perfectionist. To help out, Steve Stiles, a veteran humor cartoonist, was brought on to provide backup stories for each issue, resulting in three more being produced that year. Don Simpson brought Megaton Man back with the return of Megaton Man, a three-issue miniseries that satirized the merchandise of the comic book business, though Simpson's relationship with Dennis Kitchen remained stormy at best. Reportedly, Simpson didn't want to be characterized as Megaton Man creator, but Kitchen argued that's what he did best. Simpson would return to various characters in the series over the years, but ultimately the break away from Kitchen altogether. That same year, Chip and Vanilla and Dennis in the Deep by Doug Potter was released, which focused on the inhabitants of a large city. However, Twist, J.D. King's humor anthology, ended as, as in Death Rattle with issue number 18. On the bright side, the spirit kept rolling with issues number 39 and 51, with Tom Hingettis, a former comics journal editor, taking over as new columnist, replacing Dave Schreiner. The series also won the best reprint at the Harvey's, Kitchen Sink's first, of the awards. Kitchen Sink Press also started expanding its merchandising line with t-shirts and trading cards in their books, from Zane's Tales to the Spirit. In 1989, Kitchen Sink reached an agreement with Berkeley Books to distribute a soft-cover trades to the general markets as Lil Abner and a contract with God. However, two years after two years, the experiment failed as Berkeley proved a poor advocate for Kitchen Sink Press's books. Nancy Eats Food, collected food strips by Ian Bushmiller, along with How Sluggo Survives, about Nancy's pal, was released that year and did quite well. Another book that was successful in the general market was Cadillac and Dinosaurs, the most commonly known name of Mark Schultz's uh, series in Zoic Tales, which collected the first four issues of the series. However, Secrets of San Sabah, a collection of stories originally serialized in Death Battle, was, was released to poor sales. Created by Jack Jackson, it was a historical fantasy series that mixed the Spanish conspects of parts of Texas with an Indian god from outer space. Also that year, the City Pimpy's Notebook by Will Eisner was released, along with Blab No. 4, Snarf, and French Ticklers, a short-lived attempt to do an English translation of a French humor comic. Kings of the Stiles won the Harvey and two Eisners for the best new series and the best single issue. Yarn Man and Megaton Man meets the unrecognizable X demos was also released by Don Simpson, along with Stephen number one and two by Doug Allen. Omaha, however, had only one issue published in 1989, which is number 14, as Reed Waller was experiencing bad health that would later be diagnosed as bowel cancer. Kitchen Sink Press did manage to produce an Omaha statue designed by Waller and sculpted by Stephen Coes. In 1990, Pete Pulaski returned to school and became a teacher, something that 20 years later at Kitchen Sink had, had distracted him from. He would continue to produce the occasional work for Kitchen Sink Press, but was no longer a regular presence. John Koenig, who published the Comics Buyer's Guide and Goldmine for cross-publishing, was hired as VP of Marketing, who introduced computerized editorials and art departments to speed up production. The farm was also remodeled and given a new warehouse, where a new retail mail-order catalog was produced, quickly becoming 15% of the company's business. Borderlands Volume 2 No. 1 by Don Simpson was released, but sold poorly. Bizarre Heroes was also released by Simpson, being the first foray into superhero stories by Kitchen Sink Press, but also did badly. Finally, Megaton, the Megaton Man collection of the first four issues, both soft cover and a signed hardcover, were released. It would be Simpson, Don Simpson's last work with Kitchen Sink. Will Eisner was also doing less work for The Spirit, which was, had reached its issue number 73, as the sales were dropping on that book as well. Omaha still sold well, with issues number 15 and 16 being released, along with a reprint of the first story from Bizarre Six number 9, called Omaha number 0. However, the link between the issues releases did see a downside in sales. The Enzoic's Tales came out with issue number 10, which saw Mark Schultz argue even better. However, this is the deep ended with issue number 9, as did French Tickler's issue number 3. Snarf was even put on hiatus after issue number 15. Mark Landman began Buds, another human anthology, while Steve and number three solidifies Doug Allen's place as a cult figure in the cartoonist world. Monty Bouchamp's uh, Blab number no. five was also released this year, an all crime issue that sold very well. Howard Cruz produced Wendell Comics, a collection of his stories about a gay couple he originally serialized in The Advocate, though it didn't sell very well. However, the World's Worst Comic Awards by John Schumeister and Rich Larson, which is a collection of the serious superhero stories over the years, did. Melody number no. 5 and 6 came out and sold well, but like the other Kitchen Seek press releases, the inconsistent release schedule affected the sales. Owl Hoots, a new series by James Vance and artist Duran Garcia, was produced about an aging lawman from the first decade of the 20th century working to make a film about his exploits, it was also released, but Lois Sales would see the series canceled after issue number 2. Vance did better when he and Dan Burns Keen the Size, which was collected the series into a 10-page story that did 
for Dark Horse Presents, which ended up selling well and being named one of Publishers Weekly's best trade paperbacks in 1990. On the reprint front, Sacred Agent X-9, the 1990s crime strip by Flash Gordon artist Alex Raymond and writer Dashiell Hammett, most popularly known as the author of The Thin Man and the Maltese Falcon, was released as collections, which sold great. Omaha was represented with the collected Omaha volumes 3 and 4, with Reed, and Reed Waller were even pulled together a miscellaneous art book, The Irrelic Art of Reed Waller, which was released in a cellophane wrap to keep away from children's eyes. However, when a customer was accidentally sent a copy of The Irrelic Art of Reed Waller over the art of Will Eisner, Kittensink Press's phone lines burned for a while. Dinosaur Shaman, the second collection of Zenozoic Tales, was released, along with a new candy bar carrying the series' more iconic title, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Sasha Hari, the producer of the Doors movie, was hired for merchandising Mark Schultz's creation and was able to get GM to let the use of the Cadillac name in any movie or merchandise based on the comic. At Schultz's request, he was kept as far away from negotiation as possible, with the exception of having final approval on whatever deal emerged, as he wanted to just focus on his comic book. However, Schultz was soon distracted by cr- creating parochial art for the various products. Other works from Kitchen Sink Press was Dorman's Doogie by Frank Stack and Halstead Street by Skip Williamson. Stack, an art professor at the University of Missouri-Columbia, ha- had helped pioneer the underground comics genre in the 1960s with Fulbert Sturgeon, with Doogie being a strip about his graphic observation of his own dog. Halstead was a collection of Williamson's strip he did for the Chicago paper back in the 1970s. Also that day, Ernie Bushmeyer's Nancy strip saw two more reprints in Dreams and Schemes and Burns, Vestals, and Hypos, along with Artists and Connors, a flip side title. For the 50th anniversary of The Spirit, The Spirit Casebook was released, collecting 18 of the, the strip's best stories in both softcover and hardcover edition, along with a special Spirit Halloween mask as a novelty item. Little Abner reached its 11th book collection along with a companion book, The Fearless Foss Dick, Al Cap strip within a strip in which he satirized Chester Gold's Dick Tracy comic book strip. Max Allen Collins, Dick Tracy's then current writer, provided the introduction. Another reprint everyone was looking forward to was Alley Oop by V.T. Hamlin, a classic and then lost strip about two cavemen who traveled through time. Its creator Hamlin, despite being 90 years old at the time, championed the project and even signed plates for the hardcover edition. Flash Gordon also had additional collections released, notably Flash Gordon Sunday Pages, which reprinted the full-color strips with people off Lasky running the project and even designing the covers. The Complete Color Crazy Cat, a comic strip about a cat and mouse strange friendship, and Multicanist Terry and the Pirates, an adventure series that looked, took place in China, was also collected, despite having been done by other publishers. This was started when Rick Marshall approached Kitchen Sink Press about reprinting the two books in Cliff Everett's Polly and Her Pals, about a young girl Polly and her friends' adventures in the early 20th century. Kitchen eventually agreed when they found out that both Crazy Cat and Terry were being published out of order and with poor production values, along with wanting to bring attention to the under, underappreciated Polly and Her Pals. Kitchen Sink also published, of all things, Batman the Dailies through DC, a collection of the earliest newspaper strips that Bob Kane had actually worked on. The series was eventually compromised of three books and a Sunday strip collection, with a surviving artist providing signed copies. In 1991, Heart of the Storm was published by Will Eisner, along with the Will Eisner Reader, which collected his quarterly series. The Spirit ended with issue number 87. Kitchen Sink also produced a collection of baseball comics with uh, Will Eisner and Jules Pfeiffer, Cottonwood, a collection of Ray Otto's baseball strip, and Small Wonders, a collection of Frank Frazetta's funny animal comics, which was also released that year. From Og to Zap by Harvey Kurtzman, a signed hardcover of his history of comic books, was produced as a signed hardcover as well. The Curse of the Mellow Man by Charles Barnes was also released, a collection of his black and white comic from Raw. Kitchen Sink Press continued with other merchandise adventures such as t-shirts and cards, along with signs which were modeled after old advertisements. A notable one was a Rocketeer sign by Dave Stevens, the series creator, which was done in conjunction with the upcoming Disney movie of the same name. A pretty ambitious piece was the multicolor serial by Mark Schultz, who drew the art of and provided a color guide for the 11 colors that would be printed on the 11 passes on the silk screen press. Robert Crumb did two, while Eisner did one. The Nozoic Tales, number 10, also won the Schultz, the Best Artist Award at the Harveys. Kitchen Sink also produced the Grateful Dead comics for the band, despite the seep demands, which included copyrighted the stories and final approval. Despite this, the 40 page magazine was well received and sold well. In 1992, Reed Waller was diagnosed with cancer, and Images of Omaha was produced to raise money for his treatment. Organized by Craig Worley and Sidney Marks, it featured contributions from the likes of Neil Gaiman and Harlan Ellison. He still managed to produce Omaha No. 17, and thankfully, the Wall- Waller's cancer was arrested. 
The Grateful Dead comics was continued with Tim Truman, who was a true Dead fan and was able to produce good stories despite the creative restraints. Invisible People, a Will Eisner book exploring the themes of forgotten people in three stories, also won the har- two Harveys, as did Zenozoic Tales number 12, which was released as Cadillacs and Dalek's 3D, 3D, 3D book. Meanwhile, the animation company no- Novella signed a contract to do the cartoon Cadillacs and Dinosaurs for CBS. Blood Club by Charles Barnes was released, another edition in his Big Baby story, along with a Hey Look reprint by Harvey Kurtzman, a collection of his early comic book one-pagers, which also won a Harvey. Kitchen Sink also started collector card sets called Republicans Attack to be timed with the upcoming presidential election. Meanwhile, talks began to merge Kitchen Sink with Dun Tundra, the comic book company owned by Kevin Eastman, the co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. While this looked to be a boon for the company, it will eventually cause its end. In 1993, the company worked heavily with Cadillacs and Dinosaurs cartoon while it merged with Tundra on April 1st, moving the company to Massachusetts on May 15th. This proved disruptive for the company, as many of the staff couldn't due to family and financial concerns, but the deal was signed and moving forward. Cherry, an adults-only comic, was released by Larry Wells, along with Omaha number 18 and 19, making a perfect companion issue. A Century of Women Cartoonists by Trina Robbins was also released, a lavishly illustrated book that focused on six historical women in comics, including Trina. Time in Overdrive, another collection by Mark Schultz, was also released. A new card set was produced, Mob Wars, by Max Allen Collins, which sold well. Tundra also busy, most notably with Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. His 215-page dissection of the comic book form and quickly propelled Scott McCloud to be the forefront of comic book intellectuals. From Hell by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell, their take on the Jack the Ripper mystery, was also released to rave reviews. Cages by Dave McKean, a visually stunning graphic novel, also came out that year. Jim Wooding and Mark Martins produced tantalizing stories and Frank and the River, and most notably, Madman, the Oddity Odyssey by Mike Alfred was produced, which took a skewed look at the comic book superheroes. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, meanwhile, premiered on CBS that September 18, 1993, and spawned a toy line from Tyco, along with numerous other licensing agreements, including an arcade beat-em-up game of the same name by Capcom. Sadly, while the, comic was, while the cartoon was well-received, it was ultimately canceled as it was scheduled against the, the then-super-popular Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, lasting only 13 episodes and ending, up, and ending on July, January 28, 1994. In 1994, the Crow graphic novel was released by uh, James O'Barr with merchandise as part of the larger tie-in with the movie. The book was a huge success, selling over 130,000 copies. Introducing Kafka was released by Robert Crumb and David, David Jan Eriguitz, along with Twisted Sisters. Meanwhile, Ocean Cop Corporation bought a controlling Sarah in Kitchen Sink Press. Sadly, the company, like many others during the speculation class, limped along, only surviving on the Crow miniseries to dwindling effect. Finally, the company was ultimately dissolved in 1999 as ultimately Kitchen Sink was no longer a unique company in the comic book industry. With the demise of the CCA, which the comics genre had originally sprang from, to the other independent publishers that are also favoring credit rights like Image. Times had changed and Kitchen Sink was sadly left behind. As for the company's founder, Dennis Kitchen would continue to work with Will Eisner and Harvey Christman as an art agent with his new company, Dennis Kitchen Art Agency. He also became a partner with Kitchen in Linden Associates, which served as a book agency and packager for the estates of Harvey Kutzman, Al Cap, and others. In 2010, he released The Oddly Compelling Art of Dennis Kitchen, part art book and autobiography, and in 2011 would be nominated for both an Eisner and Harvey Award. In 2013, Kitchen's work with Dark Horse continued with a new imprint, Kitchen Sink Books, with the intention of reprinting art books and collections. The first was The Best of the Comics Book, a collection of stories he released with Marvel back in the 1970s, which was also released in December of 2013. As for David Schreiner, he would continue to work with Will Eisner until he passed away from cancer in 2007 at the age of 57. Even after the end of Kitchen Sink, he he remained his stalwart editor, working on every one of his books with the exception of the plot, Eisner's last major work. While Kitchen Sink Press is ultimately gone, his legacy in comic books remains. For decades, it was a big in independent publishers and creators' rights, pushing the envelope and moving the medium in exciting new directions. Plus, with lasting legacies like the Kyle Book Legal Defense Fund, Kitchen Seeds Press's legacy continues to be felt to this day. I would like to thank my main source for these, ep- these episodes, Kitchen Sink Press, the first 25 issues by the late Dave Shriner himself. An excellent chronicle of the history of the company with a year-by-year analysis and great full-color pictures. A must-read for anyone interested in the history of Kitchen Seeds Press. 
And now it is uh, January 10th, 2019. Uh, time for the reviews. Favorite comic book of the week, Criminal.